being happy. So you may lose too. Thou lies! I have nothing but my skin, my sword here, my clothes, and myself. I can't swim like a fish, rascal. Nothing can hinder me. Captain, for mine own part, I'll dance till I'm dry. What a brave day again, and what fair weather after so foul a storm. Aye, and it would have pleased the master had he seen this weather and had saved our goods, Lord. Never think on we have our lives in hell. I must think on him, and think was most maliciously done to undo me. And me too, I lost all. I had another shirt to put upon me, nor clothes but these poor rags. I had
no sooner come to give thanks for our safeties than we must raise new civil broils amongst us. Be men and rule your mind. If you will meet spikes, gentlemen, <laughs> and think to raise new riches by your powers, have a oh, I have been oh, to do oh, now. Oh, I have said my prayers. Oh, you say you've lost, then make your losses quarrel. Come on, draw your sword. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, oh, How many of them have to say I don't believe them? That's nourishing to me, it's easy. I was born quarreling. I will do not see you. But lightly on, though. Alas, what sunk eyes they have! How they are crept in as if they had been frightened! They kneel! Alas, poor souls! What are you? Speak, are you alive? <laughs> we are men as you are, only our miseries make us seem monsters! Oh, if pity dwells in noble hearts! We understand them too. Pray, Markham, gentlemen, stand wretched, speak boldly, and have release. If you be Christians, and by that blessed name, bound to leave us. Convey us from the silent. Speak, what are you? Gentle born as you are, yet to tell you more would number up our own calamities. Many years have we spent on this wretched island, the scorns and games of fortune. Oh, bless yourselves from gentlemen. The greatest plagues that human nature suffers sit here, wildness and wants innumerable. How came ye hither? In a ship as you do and as you might have been, had heaven not preserved you for some more noble use. Our men all consumed, but we too. Is there no meat above? Nor meat, nor oh. quiet. Sometimes we fall to find a falsome seabrew, and that's a delicate. Sometimes a rat, and we hunt like princes in their pleasure. Oh, and when we catch a toad, oh, do we make a banquet? For heaven's sake, let's abroad. We know no farther. Yes, we have sometimes seen the shadow of a place inhabited, and heard the noise of hunters, and have attempted to find it so far as a river we have gone, but not able to achieve that hazard, return to our miseries. You shall aboard with us, yeah. and we will leave those miseries. Nor will we be unthankful for this benefit. No, we shall pay for our deliverance. Huzzah! Look on these heaps. They seem rough and ragged quarries. Remove them and view them fully. By heaven, that go and show! Ah, be not too hasty, for here lies another heap. shall be made good. So shall mine, or with my fists I'll do it. All of us share with us, our sisters! This Cap money will undo us. Undo us all. This gold is mine. I have This golden age will have an iron ending. Have at the bunch!
base minds have no reason. I am hurt myself, but whilst I have a leg to stand on, I will so haunt their fielded souls. How do you, Captain? You bleed a face. Curse on the causes on it. Ye do no faint? No, no, I am not so happy. Do you how? Nay, oh, ye deserve it. Face greedy rogues, come. Shall we make an end of them? Oh, there are kinsmen, for heaven's sake, spare them. Alas, they're hurt enough and they will let me. Oh, Captain, Captain! Whose voice is that? The ladies. Look, Captain, look, you're undone, poor Captain. We are all undone. All, oh, all. Oh, your ship, your ship! What up? No! Blockheads, they'll have compassion on ye. Yes, yes, tis very likely. Ye have deserved it. You look like dogs now. Are your mighty courages abated? Retire, sir, and make the best use of our miseries. Play but begin now. <laughs> oh, I am hungry and hurt, and I am weary. Oh. For that surgeon, I shall die else. Where's the meat? Where's the meat? What avail voice is there? Would that we had it, sir, or anything else. I would now cut your oh. throat, you dog. But I will not do you such a courtesy to take you from the benefit of starving. And so I'll leave you. Your first oh. course is served. Expect the second. A vengeance on these jewels. Oh, this cursed gold. Alas, your soul, you faint. You speak the language which I should use to you. Oh, but your wounds, how fearfully they gape. If I love truly, these bathed in my warm tears would soon be cured, and leave no orifice behind. Pray, give me leave to play the surgeon and bind him up. Oh, the raw air rankles them. Sweet, we want means. Love can supply all wants. <laughs> what have you done, sweet? Oh, sacrilege to beauty. There's no hair of these pure locks by which the greatest king would not be gladly bound and love his fetters. I offer this sacrifice of service to the altar of your staid temperance and still adore it. Your goodness is the leaf in which I drown your injuries, and now live truly to serve you. How do you, sir? Receive you the least ease from my service? If you do, I am largely recompensed. You good angels that are engaged when man's ability fails to reward goodness, look upon this lady. Though hunger grips my croaking entrails, yet when I kiss these rubies, methinks I'm at a banquet, a refreshing banquet. Speak, my lost one, art not hungry? Indeed, I could eat to bear your company. Blush, unkind nature. If thou hast power, canst thou supply a glutton that robs the elements to soothe his palate, and eats only to beget appetite, not to be satisfied? And suffer here a virgin which the saints would make their guests to pine for hunger. <laughs> I remember the Portugals had often informed us. They had often heard such sounds, but never touched the shore from whence it came. Follow me, my mentor, my good genius, show me the way. Still, still we are directed. Once we reach the top of this near rising hill, we shall know farther. No, Albert, it's not to be hoped. We have no vessel that may transport us, nor hath nature given us wings to fly. Better trial hazards than perish here remediless. I feel new vigor in me, and a spirit that dares more than man serve my fair <laughs> Ourselves, I've 
commonwealth, which with ourselves begun, with ourselves must end. Ah, uh, there's the misery. But being alone, I love the freedom but to speak my thoughts, the strictness of our governess, which forbids us on pain of death. The sight and the use of men is more than tyranny. For herself, she's pestles, youthful heats, and her daughter, the fair Clarenda, <laughs> came here so young, she never dreams of man, and should she see one, she would think of him a strange beast. <laughs> <laughs> Tis not so with us. No, for my part, I must confess, I was not made for this single life, nor do I enjoy hunting so, but rather I'd be the chase myself. By Diana! <laughs> By Diana! Out upon me! I should have some my business. <laughs> I am up there, my two wench. Every hour something tells me I am forsworn. For, I do confess, imagination helps me sometimes, and that's all it's left for us to feed upon or else we shall starve. <laughs> <laughs> for if I have any pressure in this life, for when I sleep, I have strange visions. Visions, <laughs> Kurokawa? Yes, and the fine visions too. And visions I hope in dreams are harmless and not forbid by your canons. Last night, troth, this is a foolish one, but I will tell. <coughs> As I lay in my cabin, between sleeping and waking, with thoughts of a sweet young man in dear son, Twenty, with a downy chin, still slightly to my cabin, all brave, took me in his arms and kissed me twenty times. Yet still I slept! Yet still you slept? Your faith I did! And when we thought he was warm by my side, I stretched out both my arms, and when I felt him not, I shrieked out! And waked for Oh, it was a pretty dream. Aye. If it had been a true one. But say, what's cast here on the shore? Tis a man, shall I strike him? Mm, no, 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 no. He's <laughs> <laughs> a handsome beast. What do you have more than me? Stand close, wenches, and let's hear if he can speak. Do I yet live? Sure, and Sarah, I breathe. What place is this? Sure, something more than human keeps residence here. Ah, he makes towards us. Hold. Stand or I'll shoot. Hold! He makes no resistance. Mm. Be not offended, goddesses, that I fall thus across you at your feet. Thou shapes know I am a man, a wicked, sinful man. Tis not for myself I beg thus poorly, for I am already wounded, wounded to death and faint. My last breath is for a virgin, comes as near in all perfection as what's mortal may resemble things divine. Oh, pity her, and let your charity free her from this desert. <laughs> By my life, I cannot hurt him. Though I lose my head for it, no, I. I must fit him. And where? But stay. <laughs> what new game have you found here, huh? What beast is this lies wallowing in its gore? Get him off. But what is it? Oh, it is infectious. <laughs> is it a man? It is. Oh, what brave shape it has in death! How excellent would it appear had it life? Why should it be infectious? I have heard my mother say I had a father. Was not he a man? Questionless, madam. Your fathers, too, were men? Oh, uh, without doubt, lady. And without such, it is impossible we could have been. Tis a sin against nature to deny it. Nor can you or I have any hope to be a mother without the help of a man? Impossible! <laughs> then which of you, most barbarous, uh, knowing that from a man you had eaten and owed to it the name of parent thirst presumed to kill? Whose arrows made these wounds speak now or by Diane without distinction I'll let fly at you all. Not mine, not mine. <laughs> this is strange that he see her move thus. It is strange your fury, madam. Had we but killed him, we had but followed your mother's orders. But if she command unjust and cruel things, we are not to obey it. We are innocent. <laughs> Some storm did cast him she brought on the shore as you see wounded. Her thus we, we be certain to such your mother doth appoint death. Come here, I charge ye. Bend his body softly, rub his temples. Thou shalt be my office. Yes. Hold the red steels into his pale lips. 
Now he breathes, the air passing through those Arabian groves yields not so sweet an odor. Prithee, taste it, taste it, Kropala, yet I envy thee so great a blessing. Tis not a sin to touch these rubies, is it? Not, I think. Or thus to live chameleon-like? I can resign my essence to live ever thus. Oh, raise him up gently. Some soft hand hath found these wounds. A woman's hair! What fury for which my ignorance does not know a name is crept into my bosom. But I forget my pious work. His eyelids, oh, prodigious two suns break from these orbs. Where am I? What place is this? To what goddess do I owe this second life? Sure thou art more than mortal. No goddess, friend, but made of the same brittle mold as you are. I have a hand to meet with yours, and lips to bid yours welcome. <laughs> I see that even though a young maid has never seen a man, that's just how titillations <laughs> and inform her. <laughs> but here's our lover now! <laughs> now I expect a storm! Child of my flesh, unhand this monster! Monster, mother? <laughs> yes, and every word he speaks a siren's note to drown the careless here. Have I not taught thee the falsehoods and perjuries of men, on whom but for a woman to show pity is to be cruel to herself? Have we, Clorinda, since thy father's wreck, sought liberty to lose it uncompelled? Did fortune guide, or rather destiny, our bark to which we can appoint no port to this blessed place inhabited heretofore by warlike women who kept men in subjection? Did we then, by their example, after losing all we could love in a man, here plant ourselves with execrable oaths, never to look on a man but as a monster? And wilt thou be the first president to infringe on those vows we made to heaven? Hear me, and hear me with justice. And as you are delighted in the name of mother, hear a daughter that would be like to you. Should all women use this obstinate abstinence you would force upon us, in a few years the whole world would be peopled only with beasts. We must and will have them. I will take them all over Are ye mad? Can no persuasion alter ye? Suppose you had my suffrage to your suit, could this shipwrecked wretch supply them all? Hear me, great lady. There live a company of wretched men, such as your charity may make your slaves. But are they like to you? Let's speak they your language. Are they able, lusty men? <laughs> <laughs> they were. And in their may of you, through gentle blood and such as may serve you, now cold and hunger hath lessened their perfection, but restored to what they were. I doubt not they'll appear worthy of your favors. This is a blessing we durst not hope for. Dear mother, be not obdurate. Hear then my resolution, and labor not to add to what Hall Granfords will be fruitless. You shall appear as good angels to these wretched men, and a small boat will pass over to them to bring them comfort. If you approve of their persons and they of yours, for will force nothing. Each shall choose a husband and enjoy his company a month, but that time expired you shall ne'er more come near him. If you prove fruitful, the males ye shall return to them, the females we will reserve ourselves. This is the utmost ye shall ever obtain. As ye see fit, dismiss of the stranger and prepare tomorrow for the journey. Come, yes. daughter, we will show you our present bowers and you shall find something to cheer your heart. Excellent lady, though twill appear <coughs> wonder one near starve should refuse rest and meat. I cannot take your noble offer. I left in yonder desert a virgin near pine. She is not your wife? No lady, but my sister. Tis now dangerous to speak the truth. <laughs> Now, if you please to afford me an easy passage to her and some meat for her recovery, I shall live your slave, and thankfully she ever shall acknowledge her life at your service. You plead so well, I can deny you nothing. I myself will see you furnished, and with the next sun visit and relieve thee. Ye are all goodness. Oh, what a tempest have I in my stomach! How my empty guts cry out! Oh, the muir! The happiness my dogs had when I kept house at home. They had a storehouse, a storehouse of most blessed bones and crusts. Oh. Happy crusts. Oh, how shall mother pinches me? Oh, my poor, unfortunate belly. I have nothing to satisfy thee, neither meat nor water. My belly is grown together like an empty satchel. Oh, 
Oh no! What news? Is that any meat? I've got some mud. <laughs> we'll eat it with spoons. <laughs> Very good. Thick mud. But it stinks damnably. It may be poison. Let it be anything so I can get it down. Has there no biscuits, no crumbs left in my pocket? Here's my double, give me my piece no. Oh, thou speaks of paradise. Oh, but to lay the glasses. Here comes the surgeon. Ah, ah. What is that a scuffle? Smile, smile, and comfort us. I am expiring. Ah! <laughs> An inner soul well soft. <laughs> Here comes the woman. It may be she has meat and may relieve us. Let's withdraw and mark and then be ready. She'll have her store us until cousins. to relieve me ere I perish. I had whole floods of tears a while that nourished me. They are all consumed for thee, dear Albert. For thee they are spent, for thou art dead. O oh, merciless fate hath swallowed thee. Oh, I grow heavy, sleep is a salve for misery. O oh, heaven, look on me, and either take my life or make me once more happy. She's fast asleep already. Why should she have this blessing and we wait still, wait to our wants? We were bound, ye all know, for happy places. She turned the captain's mind, and must have him go in search, I know not of who, nor to what end, of such a fool her brother, and such a coxcomb her kinsman, and we must put in everywhere. She has put in now, if faith. Why should we consume thus and starve, have nothing to relieve us, and she live there that bred all our misery? Well, she's young and tidy in my conscience. Shall we delicately just a young I think she may be made good meat, but uh, we shall want some salt. <laughs> uh, let's kill her anyway. <laughs> that we might be at our meat! How of the captain? Hear me first, heart. 
is so inhuman. I want to have the air corrupted with it. Oh, barbarous men, sit down to pot and honest sailors. But stand you off and touch nothing but what's flung you as if you were dogs. If you do, I'll cut your fingers, friend. There, friend, there. Eat your meat. Tonight. There's more bread. See how they snarl like dogs? Eat quietly, you rascals. Eat quietly. What have you discovered? Sweet, a paradise. A paradise inhabited with angels. Such are you are. Their pities make them angels. They gave me these means. Shall not we see you? Yes, they will see you. Out of their charities, having heard our story, they will come and comfort us. And come presently, we shall no more no wants nor miseries. Are they all women? All, and all in love with us. Ooh. How? <laughs> Do not mistake in love with our misfortunes. Oh, dear mistress, when you should name me and the women should hear, call me brother, and you all call sister. Pray observe this all. Why do you change color, sweet? Eating too much meat. <laughs> Sauced with jealousy. Five, five, you're saying. If faith, you are to blame. Are you not here, here fixed in my heart? <laughs> there come, stand ready and look nobly. And with all the humble reverence receive them. Our lives await their gentle pities, and death waits upon their anger. Be they devils, devils of flesh and blood, after so long a Lent and tedious voyage, to me they are angels. Are these the jewels you run mad for? Nothing can persuade you to love yourselves and place your happiness in cold, chasing mm -hmm. graces of each other? This is from the purpose. We had your grant to have them as they were. Tis the most beauteous creature. And to myself I do appear deformed when I consider her. Yet she is the stranger's sister. Why then should I fear? She cannot prove my rival. When you repent that you refuse my counsel, let it add to your afflictions that you were forward, yet leapt into the gulf of your misfortunes. But have your wishes. I am instructed, but take heed, Albert, and prove not false. Ye are your own assurance, and so acquainted with your own perfections that weak doubts cannot reach you. Therefore, fear not. If you are poor and miserable men, my eyes do inform me. That you will be thankful, I do not question, nor demand what country bred you, what names, what manners. To us it is sufficient we relieve as such have shapes of man, and I command, as we are not ambitious to know further of you, that on pain of death you do not presume to inquire what we are or whence derived. In all things we obey you and Thankfully, we ever shall confess ourselves your creatures. You speak as becomes you. First, then, and willingly, deliver up all weapons we could force from you. We lay them down most gladly at your feet. I have had many a combat with a tall wench before, but yes. never was disarmed. <laughs> and now, here comfort. Your wants shall be supplied, and though it be a debt women may challenge to be sued to, especially such they may command. We give up that power to you. Therefore, freely each make his choice. Then here, my face. Minya, she's mine, I have her first. This mine. Stand back, <laughs> rascals, and give your betters leave. Your betters, and grumble not. If you do, as I love meat, I will so swing to the saltage out on you. Captain, men, and the rest of us, that our brothers and good fellows have been too late by the ears, and yet smart for our follies. To end, therefore, all future emulation, if you please, to trust to my election, you shall say, I am not partial to myself, I doubt not. Give content to all. Agreed, agreed. Then but observe how learned and discreetly I will proceed. For you, Captain, being first in place, and therefore first to be served, I give my judgment thus. For your aspects, ye are much inclined to melancholy. Therefore, to your arms I give this rose-cheeked virgin. To my wish, till now I never was happy, nor I a curse. A merry fellow, and were not a man a creature I detest, I could endure his company. <laughs> <laughs> now here is a fair herd of does before me, and now for a barren one, for though I like the sports, I do not like to father children. Then, <laughs> draw I forth my handkerchief, and having made my choice, I thus bestow it. On me? On you. Now my choice is made. Be advised, alas, fool, I am old. How can you hope content for one that's fifty? Never talk on it. I have known good ones at three score and upwards. 
Besides, the weather's hot, and men that have experienced fear of fevers. A temperate diet's the only physic. A bad fellow. Well, sir, I'll give you hearing as I like your wounded discourse, but I must tell ye, rich widows look for great sums in presents and assurance of ample jointure. Why, that to me is easy, for instantly I'll do it. Hear me, comrades! What sayest thou, Tibbles? Why, that to woo a wench with empty hands is no good heraldry. Therefore, let's to the gold, and share it equally. Twill speak for us. Well advised, defer it not. Are ye all contented? We are! Let's away then, and straight we'll return, and you shall see our riches. Oh my God! <laughs> Since I know what wonder and amazement was, I was so transported. <sighs> Why weep ye, gentle maid? There is no danger here to such as you. We seem ourselves most happy. And you? It was fortune that brought you hither. Hark in your ear. I love you as a friend already. Soon you shall call me by a nearer name. I wish your brother well. I know you apprehend me. I, mm -hmm. to my grief, I do. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So soon it turned. Speak, ladies. Look me not lovely now. Yes. Yes, oh my stars. Be forever blessed that brought to my revenge what? these robbers. Take your animals and send out these monsters to the earth! What mean you, lady, and what have we offended? Oh, my daughter, and you, companions with me in all things, look on these caskets, these jewels. These were ours when we first set to sea with good Sebastian, and these the pirates had deprived them, not only of this treasure, but also his life. Part of my present, I will remember, was my own. And these were mine. Sure, I've worn this jewel. Wherefore do ye stay and perform my command not? Why shoot ye not? You need your mother. And when the greatest cruelty is justice, do not show mercy. Death to these starved wretches would be a reward, not a punishment. Let him live to undergo the full weight of our displeasure. Tis well counseled. And we'll follow it. Hear us. Peace, dogs! Bind them fast! When fury not given way to reason, I will determine of their suffering, which shall be horrid. Vengeance and the wrath of the incense and power falls most sure on wicked men when they are most secure. And when ye look upon them, 
Look with those eyes that wept those bitter sorrows, those cruelties ye suffered by their repines. Some five days hence that blessed hour comes most happy to me that knit this hand to my dear husband. On that hour, ladies. What of that hour? <sighs> Why, on that hour, and the height of all our celebration, their lives shall fall, sacrifice to vengeance. I will look glorious in their bloods, and the most noble spirit of Sebastian, that perished by the pride of these French pirates, shall smile in heaven and bless the hand that killed them. Look strictly all unto your prisoners, take heed. She that deceives my trust, again, take heed. Her life, and that's but light neither, her life, and all tortures my spirit can put upon it. We shall be careful. We shall be careful. Do so. You are angry, mother. And you are old, too, forgetting what men are. <laughs> but we will temper you. How fair your prisoners, ladies, in what forms do they appear in their afflictions? Mine fair but poorly, for so I am commanded. Tis none of their fault. How do they suffer? Faith like boys. <laughs> they kneel and beg upon the ground when I smile to have that face continued, and like poor slaves adore the ground I go on. Gosh, these are poor things. Have they names like Christians? Very fair names. Franville, Lemur, and Moriette. They brag of great kindreds, too. They say if they would be brought before you, they would reveal things of strange consequence. An hour hence, I'll take view of them and hear their business. Are your men thus, too? <laughs> Mine, gentle madam. <laughs> no, mine were not cast of such base molds. <laughs> Afflictions, tortures, those are names on natures of delight to my men. All sorts of protests that you like pleasure. <sighs> I have one too. The one they called Dupont. Tibot Dupont. The other, uh, the shipmaster. Look to him nobly. My mother will not always be thus rigorous. Mine are sailors, madam. They sleep soundly and seldom trouble me, except when they dream sometimes of fights and tempests. Look to them diligently, and where your pities tell you they may deserve, give comfort. We will. I fear these pities. Surely he was so much I pity him, and for your sake, whose eyes sweet for him? Nay, for his own sake. I think he is good. I assure myself he will be. And out of that assurance, take comfort, for I perceive your fear hath much dejected you. I love your brother. <laughs> Do ye indeed? You doubt still because you fear for his safety. Indeed, he is the sweetest man I ever saw. I think the best. And you may hear without blushes and thank me, if it pleases you, for my courtesy. <laughs> Madam, I ever must, yet witness heaven. They are hard pulled from me. Believe me, so many imperfections I could find. <laughs> you think Greeks for lying. And such wants your noble uses, Madam, has so bound me to you that I must tell ye. Come, tell your worst. He is no husband for ye. You will find him dangerous, madam, as fickle as the flying air. Proud, jealous, I could say more and tell ye I have a brother, another brother that so far excels this, both in the ornaments of man and making. If you were not his sister, I should doubt you mainly. Doubt ye for his love, you deal so cunningly. Do not abuse me. I have trusted ye with more than life. With my first love, be careful of me. In what use, madam? In this lady. Speak to him for me. You have power on him. Tell him I love him. Tell him I dote on him. It will become your tongue. Become my grave. Fortune, oh, curse fortune. Tell him his liberty and all those with him. All our wealth and jewels. Good sister, for I'll call you so. I shall, lady. Even die, I hope. Here is meat and wine. Pray. <laughs> and there he lies. Give him what liberty you please, but so concealed. Go, and be happy for me. 
will blind fortune be happy thus far I shall live to see him. In what strange desolation lives he here now? Sure this curtain will reveal. Is that some gentle hand I hope to bring me comfort, or tis my death to sweetly shadow? Have ye forgot me, sir? My Aminta? She, sir, that walks here up and down an empty shadow. I come to counsel ye. You're still more welcome. Good friends and afflictions give good counsels. Pray then proceed. Pray, eat first. Ye shall faint. I thank you, madam. Here's to our loves. How turn and weep. Why do you weep thus? I come to woo ye. To woo me, sweet. I've wooed one already. <laughs> no, I know it. But this pretty way you come to me, you would deceive my sorrows. That's your intent. I would, I could. I should not weep but smile. Do you like your meat and wine? Like it? Do you like your liberty? All these I may well like. Then pray like her, that sent her. Who would you have me like? I'd not more misery to a man that's fruitful in afflictions. Who sent these comforts? The young fair virgin. Sorrow hath made me old. The, oh, wisely hark, the governess's daughter, that gloomy and sweetness. What of her? She sent it, and with it it must be out. She dotes on ye, and must enjoy ye, else no joy must find ye. And have you the patience to deliver this? A sister may say much and modestly. A sister? Yes, that name undid ye, undid us both. Had ye named wife, she had feared ye. But thinking you were free, hath kindled a fire I fear will hardly be extinguished. Indeed, I played the fool. Hear me, Aminta. Have you a man that loves ye too, that feeds ye, that sends ye liberties? Has this great governess a noble son too young and apt to catch ye? Yourself, you swore you loved me dearly. No few nor little oaths you swore, Aminta. I'll oh, seek new ways to cozen truth. I do not. By love itself, I love thee. And ever must, nor can all deaths dissolve it. Why do you urge me thus then? For your safety, to preserve your life! My life, I do confess, is hers. She gives it and let her take it away. I yield it. My love's entirely thine. None shall touch it. None, my Amita. None. Ye have made me happy, and now I know ye are mine. O fortune, I scorn thee, whilst I have time, I'll be your mate and come with ye. For only I am trusted, you shall want nothing, not a liberty that I can steal ye. May we not celebrate our loves, Amita? <laughs> you are wanton, but with cold kisses I'll lay that fever. Look for no more, and that in private too. <laughs> Believe me, I shall blush else, but let's consider we are both lost else. Let's in and prevent fate. You do well to air us, ladies. We shall grow musty else. What say you wise wills now? For are you weary at the charge here at? You are oh, turn us abroad. We're gross, coarse, and unfit for your sweet pleasures. You are determined. Still to restore them, it will become ye. You may as well be kind and gain our favors. Gain meat and drink and lodging to rest your bones. Uh, my bones have borne me thus long and had their share of pains and recreations. <laughs> if they fail me now, they are no just companions. <laughs> <laughs> are you thus? Why, slaves, tis in our power to hang ye. Very likely. Tis in our power then to be hanged. <laughs> Scorn ye. <laughs> Hanging's as sweet to us as dreaming is to you. Come, be more courteous. Do, and ye shall have all content. Ye shall have all necessaries. Aye, and will serve your uses. I'd rather serve hogs, there's more delight in it. Your greedy appetites will never be satisfied. By this hand we'll starve ye. Then we'll eat one another like good fellows. <laughs> a shoulder of mine for a haunch of his. <laughs> <laughs> well, ye may hang or starve us, but your commanding impudence shall never fear us. Had ye by blushing signs, soft cunnings crept into us and showed us your necessities, we had met your purposes, supplied your wants. We are no saints, ladies. I love a good wench, as I love my life. <laughs> and with my life I will maintain that love, but such sordid impudence I'll spit at. Let's to our dens. Come, noble master. You know our minds, ladies. This is the faith in which we'll die. I do admire. They are noble fellows, and they shall not want for this. 
but here's Clarinda. Up to my charge. <laughs> Bring out the prisoners now. Let me see them after their business. I will. I hope she hath prevailed upon her brother. She has a sweet tongue that can describe the happiness my love is ready to fling on him. Oh, oh bless my divine beauty! Mirror of sweetness! Ever spring brightness! Nay, gentlemen, stand up and leave your flatteries. Oh, she calls us gentlemen, sure we shall to me now! What would you do if you were to die now? Alas, we are prepared. If you will hang us, let's have a good meal. <laughs> or two. To die with, to put us in heart. Or if you'll drown us, let's be drunk first that we may die merely and bless Ooh. the founders. What is the great service you so oft have threatened if you should meet me and win my favor? Good, no confusion. We are before a lady that knows manner. By the next meet, I shall be to certain that this little gentlewoman that was taken with us. The captain's sister, she you mean. Aye, aye, she's the business we would open to ye. She's no sister, man. What is she? She is, as a man would say, Whoa. his. What? His mistress. Oh, me. And why he should delude you thus unless some, he meant some villainy, these ten weeks he has Whoa. had her at sea for his own proper appetite. His cabin I'll assure ye. No sister, say ye. No more. Whoa. Away with him, do let it, and feed him. Ah, yes! Same food as they've given me. New misery. Oh. <laughs> oh, I could burst. Follow me, Juletta, and call the rest along. Oh. Nor oh. meat, nor thanks for all this. <laughs> I must be gone now, else she may suspect me. How shall I answer her? Tell her directly. I were too sudden, too improvident. Farewell once more. Nay, kiss me once again. Methinks we should not part. It will be wise, sir. Nay, one kiss more. Out, thou base woman, or by heaven I'll shoot them both. Nay, stay, brave lady, hold. A sudden death cuts off a nobler vengeance. Am I made bod to lascivious meetings? Shut up, that villain in Sirhah. Now expect my utmost anger. Let him there starve. I mock at your mistress. Tie that false witch unto the tree, and there let savage beasts and snakes embrace her beauties. Tie her, and watch that none relieve her. Oh, I could wish you better fortune, lady, but dare not help you. Be your own friends, I thank you. Oh, heaven, be kind to me, and if it they will preserve. Who is this? <laughs> Short as a woman. Let me see her face. Oh, heaven. Turn this way, man. Oh, Raven, your brother. Her tongue too, tis my sister. <laughs> and nay, kiss me first, oh joy. Fly, fly, dear brother. You are lost else. What are these? A man, a man, a new man. <laughs> I dare not use my sword, ladies, against such comely foes. I'm enemy! I'm enemy! Dispatch him. Take him off and shoot him straight. In dark prisons bind him. One word reply, you die both. Follow thy noble anger, mother, and I'll help thee. I am deaf to all your entreaties! She that knows me for pity or compassion of these pirates digs up her father's or her brother's tomb and spurns in their ashes. I am taught that in noble causes, revenge is noble. Therefore, their lives shall fall sacrifice to appease his wandering ghost and my incensed fury. The new come prisoner, too. He, too, that we may learn whether they are the same or nearly allied to those that forced me on this cruel course, better their poor allowance and permit him to meet and confer within the distance of your ear, that they may discover something that will kill despair in me and be a means to save them from certain ruin. That shall be my charge. See that table furnished with wine to tea. That is for the secrets which tortures cannot open. 
says, crips the guts as well as any mineral. I'll run the hazard. Oh, word past fear. I'll take part with ye. Do, and now I faith, what's this? Wine, and it be thy will, strong, lusty wine. Oh, my sweetheart, how I will hug thee again and again. Take heed, man. Too much breeds distemper. Hast thou lived at sea the most part of thy life, where to be sober while we have wine aboard is capital treason? <laughs> And dost thou preach sobriety? We may offend in it. We know not for whom it was provided. I am sure for me. Therefore, Futra, when I am drunk, let him hang me. I care not. Who are these? Mary, who you will. I keep my text here. <laughs> Raymond? Albert! <laughs> Away! I'll be drunk alone. You <laughs> have putting on your eyes of anger. Sir, I have sought you long to find your pardon. You have plowed the ocean to wreak your vengeance on me for the rape of this fair virgin. I crave your mercy and wish that however, however several motives kept us from being friends while we still had hope to live, let death, which we expect and cannot fly from, and all contention. Drink upon it. Tis a good motion. Ratify it in wine. Tis authentical. <laughs> when I consider the grounds of our long difference and look on our not to be avoided miseries, it doth beget in me. I know not how, a strange religious tenderness. Oh, Albert, the course they took to leave us rich was not honest, nor can that friendship last which virtue joins not, when first they forced the, the industrious Portugals from their plantations in the happy islands. This is what I watch for. And did omit no tyranny which men inured to spoil and mischief could inflict, and not content to force them from their dwelling, but laid from its sea to ravish from them the last remainder of their wealth. Then, then, after a long pursuit, each doubting other as guilty of the Portugal's escape, they did begin to quarrel like ill men. They did then turn those swords they oft had bloodied with innocent gore upon their wretched selves, and paid the forfeit of their cruelty shown to Sebastian and his colony by being fatal enemies to each other. As they, for spoil, ever forgot compassion to women, who should be exempted the extremities of a lawful war. We now, young, able men, are fallen into the hands of women that, against the soft tenderness familiar to their sex, will show no mercy. No! Unless you show some long husbands. We are those Portugals who speak tough. Say, I met upon the sea in a tall ship, two Portugals, Spanish, almost to death. Some such tale they told me, and something of a woman, which I find to be my sister. Where are these men? I left them, supposing they deluded me with forged tales. Here, where they said, they many years lived the wretched, own, the wretched owners of a huge mass of treasure. And that, the terrible muck we had quarreled for. They were Portugals, you say. So they profess? They may prove such men as to save their lives. How can you hither? My ship lies by the river's mouth that can convey you to these wretched men which you desire to save. Back to your prison! <sighs> and pray for their success. If they be those men which I decide to find, you are safe. If not, prepare to die, for the world cannot redeem you. However, we are armed for either fortune. What must become of me now that I am not dismissed? Oh, sir. I purpose to have your company. <laughs> Take heed, wicked woman. I am after mischief now. Are you so kind to her that gives you liberty? No, I shall be too kind. That's the devil, huh? Got it? <laughs> I have had store of good wine, I feel. 
strange motions. Avoid me temptation. Come, oh, sir. I'll help the end. <laughs> Sebastian nothing. She does give up herself, her powers, and her joys. All to you. I see your sort of my Clarinda. <laughs> she is yours. And lady, if it be me, if it be, and lady, if it, if it be me to confirm your hopes in this brave gentleman, presume me your servant. We thank you, sir. Oh, happy hour. Oh, my dear, and now all our fears are ended. Here I fix. She's metal, steel to the back, and will cut my leaden dagger, if not used with discretion. You are still no change, right? Nay, all look cheerfully, for none shall be denied their lawful wishes. After a while, once we've restored ourselves, we'll return to our several homes, and as this voyage ends, that made deadly enemies faithful friends. Coming friends and companions. Come lift up your voices in chorus with mine. Come lift up your voices, all grief to refrain, for we may or might never meet here again. And if ever I meet 
Just sit right back and you'll hear about 